Hello, my name is Sophie and welcome to this week's video. This week I had planned to talk about my 2020 goals, New Year's resolutions, whatever you want to call them, as it's coming up to the end of June, we're halfway through the year. However, I filmed this video, it was nearly half an hour long and it was incredibly self-indulgent just talking about my goals and what I've achieved or not achieved so far this year and it's just the equivalent blog po equivalent of a blog post that I also published earlier this week. So if you are interested in that, I will leave a link to the blog post down below. However, I am someone who loves goal setting. Uh, it's something I got into when I properly started my bullet journal in early 2017. I set myself New Year's resolutions and I wrote them down and I held myself accountable. I set monthly goals so I can continue to make progress on the things that are important to me. I have a spread in my bullet journal for a five year plan. At this point it's more ideas of where I'd like to be at certain stages of my life. But um, as I get more into employment and career stuff I suppose I'll be able to make more concrete plans. But it's something I've not really talked about on YouTube. It's something I talk about on my blog quite a lot, but it's a huge part of, I don't wanna say it's a huge part of my life because that sounds incredibly melodramatic, but um, it's something that I consistently come back to and I consistently enjoy. So if you want me to make more bullet journals slash organizational slash goal related content, let me know in a comment. However, here are some of my top tips for setting yearly goals. In the kind of goal setting world, you quite often hear the phrase short, medium and long term goals. You can assign time frames to short, medium and long as you wish, but to me, short means monthly goals, medium means yearly goals, and long term means five plus years. So the way I've organised my yearly goals is into two sections. Um, I'm a, I like sections and subcategories and it just helps me organize it better in my brain. So in the first section, I have three categories, each with three goals, because I like the number three and nine is my lucky number. The three categories are professional, which is job or education or whatever serves the greater purpose of my career. Personal, which is things I just want to personally achieve. And then home, which is more like my life with my partner and more like life goal things. And then in the other section, I have what I call nine bucket list goals, but bucket list is not the phrase because that's a very different thing. But I don't know what else to call it. They're just like nine random goals that don't really fit in the category with their things I'd like to achieve. So it's uh, my Goodreads reading challenge is on that list. Stuff like that. So that's my first tip. If you feel a little bit overwhelmed by the concept of setting medium term goals or short or long term goals, um, Breaking them down as categories and figuring out what you really want is a good place to start. So if you do follow my blog at all, I've been writing monthly mini goals blog posts for probably the best part of two years now. I did figure it out, but I've forgotten. Um, and each month I set myself five goals of things I would like to achieve over, achieve over the month. There's a fly. Sometimes they're just random things that I want to do and I've picked a certain month to start them. Sometimes they're things related to my yearly goals and making small steps of progress towards achieving those. Um, but I find having monthly goals and only having five um, really helps keep the progress moving whilst breaking big goals into smaller achievable chunks. Um, and it just makes it feel so much more approachable. Another important thing with goal setting, regardless of the length of the goals, is reflection and evaluation which sounds very formal and almost academic, but it really isn't. So a lot of my goals get written down in my bullet journal because it, I find it's nice to have them written in one place that I know exactly where to go to. And I leave gaps to like write notes to myself, essentially. Um, there's no purpose to this other than it gets it out of my head and onto paper. But with my monthly goals, I'll write them in my journal at the beginning of the month. At the end of the month, I'll come back to it and write down how I've done or how the goal wasn't quite right or how I needed to adapt it slightly. And reflecting on your goals and acknowledging uh, how successful they were can make goal setting in the future easier. Because if you set like really unrealistic goals, like one of my goals for this year was to save 500 pounds in one of my savings accounts. Realistically, six months in, I now understand that that was far too much to expect myself to save when I'm currently not working. I'm not looking to be working until the last couple months of the year. 
I've got bills to pay, rent to pay, a wedding to save for, uh, like I still want to save for a house, like thinking of all of these things now I know that that amount was unrealistic but if I didn't do the reflection I would have just thought that I hadn't achieved the goal and I wouldn't make the connection that actually the goal itself was unrealistic and I think this will be my last tip for today uh, because I've filmed this completely off the cuff with no planning and that is just to give yourself a break um, not excuse me not achieving a goal doesn't mean you're a failure in any way it's an opportunity to learn and this is something I'm still learning we're all still learning I'm someone who can you stop goal setting is a skill like any other skill it will take time and you won't be good at it straight away but c'est la vie also not good at French if you would like more of this comment, content, do let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you and the ones you love are happy and healthy and staying safe. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.